Hello everyone. Occlusal is the core of any dental treatment. Proper execution of concepts of occlusion doesn't just provide better result but also give longevity to prosthesis resulting healthy periodontium and TMJ. Today we will discuss different concepts of occlusion focusing mainly on canine guided and group function occlusion. But before that let's freshen up our basic understanding of balanced occlusion. Balanced occlusion is defined as the bilateral simultaneous anterior and posterior occlusal contact of teeth in centric and eccentric positions. What does that mean? Let's understand by the example. Balanced occlusion is given in complete denture. Suppose this is our complete denture in centric occlusion. Remember, centric occlusion and maximum intercuspation is same in case of complete denture. In centric occlusion, all the posterior teeth are in occlusion and there is over jet and overbite in anterior teeth. In coronal or frontal view, all the posterior teeth are in contact. So there is balance in the denture and no rocking of any denture is there. Our denture is stable. Now let's see what happens in protrusion. In protrusion, as soon as anterior from edge to edge, posterior teeth also come in contact and in this way, again there is contact in all the points and denture is stable. There is no rocking of anterior or posterior region. Suppose we move our mandible to the left. Then in coronal section again, all the posterior teeth are in contact making the denture balanced. So. The definition itself is the explanation that is balanced occlusion is bilateral, simultaneous, anterior and posterior occlusal contact of teeth in centric and eccentric positions. If there is disocclusion at any point, there will be loss of stability and rocking of the denture. Now let's understand another occlusal scheme that is mutually protected occlusion. Our mandible is class 3 liver that means force nearer to the muscle will be more. So posterior teeth will bear, bear more force than anterior during biting. That's why they can be used to crush the hard food. Plus studies have shown that contact in posteriors will increase masseter and temporalis activities. Now suppose you bite an apple from anterior teeth. At this moment we don't need posterior teeth to be contacting because one they will be unnecessarily overloaded and two muscle will be unnecessarily activated leading to the fatigue of the muscles. This type of scheme where anterior teeth protects the posterior teeth in eccentric moments and conversely have the posterior teeth protect the anterior teeth in maximum intercuspation is called as mutually protected occlusion. But what if we have a harder food like a raw meat? Then you need to tear this food with canines. In this case only canines of working side will be contacting teeth in the mouth. All the other teeth will be disoccluded. This type of scheme where Canine prevents all the other teeth from contacting is called as canine guided or organic occlusion which is a part of mutually protected occlusion. As canine have longer roots, they can withstand higher forces and they are nearer to the muscle compared to incisors so they can produce more forces. But what if canine are either periodontically compromised or they are worn off? In that condition, along with canines, other posterior teeth on working side may also contact. This is called as group function occlusion. Glossary of prosthodontic terms define group function occlusion as multiple contact relation between maxillary and mandibular teeth in lateral movement on the working side, whereby simultaneous contact of several teeth act as a group of group to distribute occlusal forces. The group function of teeth on working side distributes the occlusal load. The obvious advantage is maintenance of occlusion. 
the group function philosophy appears to be one of the phys physiological where. Okay, so this was about canine guided group function and mutually protected occlusion. I hope this video will be helpful.